All right, blessings, everyone. Okay. I'm just going to get right into this because there's a lot to talk about, okay? And there's a lot that I was, I'm hoping that you guys can just put all of this together yourselves in the sense of what I've been already showing you here today. And I'm now led to Renaissance. And I was talking about this when I was, you know, showing you the art along the the river and how it was all connected to the underworld and the secret society. And as you walked along the the the, uh, the river, you know, if you had the eyes to see and the ears to hear that you, you know, you were being told a story of the underworld. And I didn't realize that there was so much more to this. And I'm, you know, I apologize for that because you see, you know, when I, when I say that I received these three visions from Jesus, it wasn't about just me just looking at it, showing you the artwork and then moving on. This was about, there was more to this. There was more, it was more about the spirit with, within the wheel that is being turned here. And it's by who is turning it. And this Rotary International explained it all to you. And now I'm led to the Renaissance, the, the buildings in Detroit. And this is, you know, it's more of the meaning of Renaissance and the symbology. Because again, we're looking at the arts. I did not realize that this was the art from the 14 to 1600s, where, we're, where we were talking about like Michelangelo, like, you know, that's where I'll, you know, that's where I go with it. And then when I when I see all of the the history within that and the arts, this is truly their language. This is how they communicate. This is how they do it. This is Egypt. This is all Egypt. The colors, the, the idols, the music, the the poet, everything stems and goes back to Egypt. So what I want to do here is I just want to go into this a little bit more about the meaning and their symbology of these buildings in Detroit, these seven buildings called the Renaissance Building. Okay, so I went here to re-emerge, emergence. Okay, emergence. And this is what I read. The process of coming into sight or prominence once more. Now here, this is, I, I think of Obama right away when he wrote on top of the Freedom Tower, you know, we'll come back bigger and stronger. This is what I took from this here. Then I went to another meaning of Renaissance, you see, because you've got revival, renewal, re resurrection, reawakening, and reemergence. So I went to revival. And again, we know that a revival is a comeback, it bring, bringing back, reestablishing, and reintroduction. So I clicked here on reintroduction. And here was shocking to me. The action of bringing something, especially a law or system, into existence or effect again. Well... Here we are. This is our brother um, and a sister. Uh, brother, uh, we don't consent, Ohio, and our sister, Braveheart, who are really bringing this forward with this new Hyde laws. And here, this is what I found, and it's bringing the bringing into existence or effect again. And so we're just going to hear him out. And uh, again, this is crazy. So you guys can go to noahhide.org. You can go and you can check this out for yourself. And I'm just going to walk you through where I got some of these screenshots here real quick. Now, what you see here, this is the main screen when you first get onto noahhide.org. And as you scroll down, You'll see here where it has the Noahide uh, Denium sublaws. Now, when you click on that, it should come up to this screen here. And as you scroll down, you get down here, and then it has Courts of Justice. Now, when you click on the Courts of Justice tab, 
and you scroll down here to number 16, the court is to administer the death penalty by the sword, i.e. decapitation. Now, if you do a little surfing around on here, now this screenshot comes from the uh, booklet portion of the Noahide Laws, and this right here shows you that they're planning on putting these uh, these courts of justice in every single city. These are their words. This is their website. They put this together. This isn't hearsay. This isn't some delusion. Okay. It, it is all right here. And going into these right here, this shows you where they came up with these uh, seven Noahide laws. Okay. Now, they're saying that they got it from Genesis 2, all right, where in God, or where the Lord God commanded man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest eat. Now, from that passage right there, they claim this is where they got the seven Noahide laws. This is how they're trying to justify these laws, okay? Now, like I said, you guys are going to have to actually go and look this out for yourself, but it is right there, okay? Now, they, they pull some kind of Jonathan Cleck move here, and uh, they, they take the words and they interpret them to mean what they want it to mean. Okay, so, and if by some chance uh, you, Dr. Uh, Michael Brown, come across this video, you know, you kept saying that there, there was no proof and that these laws are not dangerous to uh, Christians and Christianity. You also said that you do not support the Talmud. If that is true... Can you please denounce this Talmudic, Kabbalist move to push these seven Noahide laws? Or... Okay. Couldn't get any clearer than that, right? The action of bringing something, especially a law or system, into existence or effect again the rebirth this is the underworld folks okay just again giving you an idea of the art and the expression this is all the underworld this is the trident the octagon with the light inside of the octagon that continuously uh, pulsates day and night. Right here. And this is at night. The octagon with the light in the middle of it. In the circle here. glimmering lights and again like I said there's shells all the way around here representing I believe the people with the seared minds the empty shells of a person day and night this is on Again, this is the bell that you see as you're leaving the park, you know. It's like the story's just been told, the bell has rung. Okay, so again, I just want to go over this. There's a few things that I forgot to mention. 
So here we have the guarding the gates of the underworld at 9-11. So these tridents, these things that you've seen with the octagon that was pulsating that light and what was around it were the tridents, okay? So here, when looking upon a weapon of Shiva and the Trishula is said to destroy the three worlds, the physical world, the world of the forefathers representing culture drawn from the past. This would be truth. They are trying to eliminate truth. And the world of the mind. This is the seared conscience. This is Operation Paperclip. Representing the process of sensing and acting. This is what they are, are going with now with the bad acting. Okay. Um, the seared mind. The world of mind. This is your battlefield. And I remember reading... And I did some research on this um, with the X. The X is very important here. You see, this man, Jonathan Kleck, his testimony led me to all of this. And the X was Mary Magdalene. And Mary Magdalene was the representation for the Knight Templars as the bloodlines that had to do with the bloodlines, the protecting of the bloodline. And here... Um, Mary Magdalene, her last conversation with Jesus, she asks him, what sees the vision, the spirit or the soul? And Jesus responds by saying, it's what's in between. And when I hear that, I hear the mind, the, the subconscious, okay, your consciousness. And this is what they are attacking. They are purging you by... They're purging your faith. They're purging your belief, okay, with repetition. And this thing, these things that, you know, like, I believe that this Kleck, I mean, he's got people looking for demons under their beds, in their closets, in picture frame, in pictures, in, in, in everything, everywhere they look, okay? And this takes away from asking the real questions and, and asking about your own personal, because everybody's salvation is their own responsibility and here with this you're not working things out you're not asking the right questions okay so they're purging you all right they're purging your belief and conscience if you don't see it then it doesn't exist and that's not the way faith works faith does not work that way belief does not work that way okay so here they are, the mind is representing the, the, sensing, the sensing and acting. Now, this is to do with your emotions. I've always said that if you can conquer your emotions and put those emotions down and not live in them or act on them, you're going to be fine. But if you live in your emotion, you are going to repeat over and over and over again. Um, again, let's move forward. The three worlds are supposed to be destroyed by Shiva into a single non-dual plane of existence. On December 21st, 2012, the earth entered into a new place in space. We entered into the age of Aquarius. The age of the symbol is certainly about three in, into one. The Trinity, Satan, the Antichrist, and the false prophet. All separate yet one. Their goal is to destroy what God has made, to sustain the spell cast on humanity, to blind and deceive them, and create the, com create the completed order of Satan. And I believe this is where that shh comes in. All right. And they, okay, they become one, which is the, the, the World Trade Center. Now, on, September, on September 11, 2011, there was an energy shift in the spiritual world, the unveiling of the twin tridents on, ten, on the 10-year anniversary of 9-11 at Ground Zero, the energy of Poseidon, the Earth Shaker. Now, I remember there was a man that was, you know, saying shaking, and he was using the number, I believe it was 88, or I can't remember if it's 88, I think it is 88 or 55, 8 being the... I think it's eight and it's high Hitler. And he was talking about the Holocaust and the shaking of the Holocaust. Okay. Well, no more than what he's talking about right here. The earth shaker, God of cities and water. 
And here we're dealing with two cities with the river in between, but the two cities could almost touch, they were that close. And she was the god of transformation, the twin tridents, also symbolized by the number 33. Again, here we are with the Masons and the Freemasons. Remember, the Masons are the ones that build with stone, okay, their love for stone. And then it's the Freemasons who recover what the Masons have built. And again, standing side by side, standing next to each other, it means completion and transformation. So here we have the tridents, the art that you see along the river here. And it's protecting the octagon with the pulsing light that doesn't stop, it's day and night. Okay, so here again, we're still along the river, but I went a little different here. I went and I visited some of the churches along the river and uh, just real quickly, I didn't go do a, a big study, you know, but I think you'll agree I got enough. Okay. Um, this here, this building here, okay, this is right across the street from the courthouse, okay? And you can see the sun worshiping here. I mean, it's very strong. And you've got, you know, all over, okay? But here it's called uh, St. John, St. John um, Church House, St. John Church House. Okay, I'm gonna get a better picture of this. And again, the wooden door, right? That's important because Masons, they, they use wood also. This is not what the one. This one. This is the same building, and you can see the the, the cross here. I suppose say. And then we got this here, and then here there's a cross, but you can't see it. I, it's the light, but it's right here. It's a circle within a circle. And then the cross, you have the Swiss cross right there. But again, this is the cornerstone of that building, the St. John's uh, Church House. And look at here, it says, to the, to the glory of God, this cornerstone was laid on Mothering Sunday. Mothering Sunday, March 25th, 1990. Mothering Sunday. Interesting, isn't it? And this is their cornerstone. Okay, so this church here, again, wood, all right. We've got Oi Swiss eh? <laughs> It's just a friend there. He, this is what he says all the time. Okay, so we've got the doors, and I wanted to see if this is the one. No. Not quite. Again, I just want to bring it up close so you can see that we have the rotary here, the octagon, all right? Um, yeah. Again, I got the cross here, the dove, again the A, the A, all right, again Egyptian. Then you've got the X right here, the oval, the white, the red. Okay. it so we have the a and I believe this would be Egyptian here and then you've got the X you can see a lot clearer 
with the red and white, the dove, the oval. Okay. Oh, come on. Okay, this is the same church. Um, let me just see if I can find a better picture. I ended up going inside. Again, this is a cornerstone. It's Han, um, 1906. There it is. Right, so here we have, I went inside the building and uh, this is what we got here. Same thing the X, and then you've got the triangle right here, which I never noticed before, but you have it right inside the X. Now, why is it that the X is so important here? Let's continue because this is, again, this is the tree. I believe that this is the tree that they talk about here for the Christmas tree. Again, the tree keeps popping up here, doesn't it? It's always the tree. Even in Genesis, they talk about the tree going back to the beginning. And now we're seeing the tree again here. And again, here's your X. I believe this is because, well, I'll get into the X a little later on. Again, this, is, I believe, is Egyptian. Okay. I thought this was something I would just take a fast shot. Masons with the, the red and the white of the Plant One Enterprise. Okay, um, this is how old these, these things are here. The Han, Alexander Great, 1734-1813. Alexander Great, son of the seventh Lodar of Glenn Morrison. Morrison, Morrison, was born in Irvernus, Sheer, Scotland. During the Seven Years' War, he served with the monogrammers where he's monogrammers, oh, the Highliners, the Landers, Highlanders, eventually commanding a slope on Lake Champlain, Champlain in 1776. Grant became com commander of the Great Lakes. The appointment reduced to Lakes Erie, Huron, and Michigan in 1778. He held until 1812. While at a state of Gross Point, Michigan, Grant served on the land, the land board of District of Hesse for seven, from 1789 until 1794, and was appointed Lieutenant of Excess County in 1799, as senior member of the ex. Uh -huh. Council of Canada. Administer president for a year upon the death of the lieutenant. Okay. Yeah. So that's, you know, these are, this is how old we're, we're going back. Okay. Now here's where I thought this was very interesting. So here's a church. Let me see if I can bring this up. Okay, here's the third church, okay? And a lot of them have these, you know, um, geez, I'm losing my words here. Sophisticus, not a, no, that's not what it is. Oh, whatever. Okay, so. Let me see. This is the third church, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna read this out. Okay, so you can see here very clearly that this is Mason right here. Okay. Nice clean Canadian flag. The cornerstone stone of St. John's Church was laid with Masonic honors on June 24, 1872 by M.W. Brother William Mercer Wilson, 
Grand Master of the Grand Lodge of Canada, ancient, free, and accepted Masons, assisted by Great Western Lodge 40, I can't read that, 47, I think. Um, William Mercer Williams served as the first Grand Master in 1855. Church services were first held in 1796 by Sheriff Richard Pollard. The first church built in 1807 was destroyed by the American forces during the War of 1812. The second church was built in 1819 and the tower added in 1852. Okay, and the President Church was built on the foundation of the 1819 church and dedicated on June 23rd. 1973. Here again, we have the tree. This is all Masons, of course, right? This, wow. I, when I saw that, oh, okay. Something going on here. So I just took a few shots here of the, the church. Okay, so this is, again, rich in history, right? All right, so now this is the fourth church right along the river. And there's more, mind you. Um, okay, so here I found it very, very interesting. All right, oh, wait a minute, I gotta go back. Oof. Jeez, I can't believe I forgot that. Hold on. I gotta go back. Oh. Wow, I can't believe I almost forgot this. I would have been very disappointed. Okay, the cornerstone here. All right. Now, I know it's a little blurry and I could barely make it out myself, but I'm going to try my best. Okay, and it says this stone was laid um, by the PTP, it's initials, all initials, the RT, PEW, and PT Han. That was the last church that we looked at also at 1906. JWC. Uh, Okay, it's a bunch of initials. I can't make it out. Sometime Bishop of London, England. Okay, something to do with the Bishop of London, England, 1957. But here's where it really got interesting with me because then we you see this here. We've got the two Vs, right? And we've got the W, right? But we also got the X. So we've got the three and one. We have the double V. It's all Mason. This collect man there, you know, he, the V for vengeance is a bunch of crap. Okay. It's just another little fairy tale. Okay. It's a fable because V represents Masons, right? And like I said, we've got the two V's. We've got the X right in the middle. We have the W. We have the three in one. Again, this is Mason. Again, this is the first tracing board. This reminds me of Jacob's Ladder with the steps. And as you go up, you will see the V here in this window, and you will also see a V in this window. So you've got, again, your two Vs, right? Not only that, but you have the ship here, and you have a rose in the middle there. You've got the threes and the fours all together if you wanted to you know, the compass and square stuff. I mean, it's all there. You've got the three, three, you've got the four. You have the V, the V, that's the W and the X put together. You have the three and one. Here you have the plaque, the city of Windsor. You've got the, rota the uh, rotary 